Transactions play a really important role in the Bitcoin network, as so far we haven't really talked about what exactly they are. It turns out that there isn't really an account system in the Bitcoin network, it rather is something we refer to as unspent transaction outputs, which essentially is like a, an accounting system with inputs and outputs. And that is exactly what we will look at in this lecture. All right, so the first thing you must understand before we can talk about individual and transactions is that Bitcoin employs something that we refer to as the UTXO model or unspent transaction output model. The idea is that whenever you have a transaction that gets confirmed on the blockchain, it essentially creates one of these UTXOs, so an unspent transaction output. It is there on the blockchain in certain conditions and it can be referenced by later transactions and then be used in a new one. And that is why we have, in the sense of transactions, inputs and outputs. So for example, here, when we have this one transaction, then you have certain inputs. That's basically what you assume value-wise, what you put in a transaction. And each transaction also creates new outputs. That's basically um, what, you're, what you're creating with these transactions, the new Bitcoin units that can be later on referenced, okay? So with the outputs, you can create these unspent transaction outputs with certain conditions, and these outputs can then again be referenced by later trans transactions once again. So when you think of the transaction as this container of value, you're basically putting some things in there, so the inputs, hmm, referencing earlier transactions with a certain value, referencing outputs of earlier, earlier transactions to be more precise. You put that in there, you assume a certain value, a certain number of Bitcoin units for your transaction, and then you can split these inputs into new outputs, outputs with their own conditions that can later on be referenced. So when we look at the input side first, of course, when you, when you put an input in your transaction, what you need to reference is first of all the earlier transaction. So you need to say, okay, this input comes from a transaction that has been confirmed earlier, confirmed earlier and is this one. So you basically put the transaction ID of the earlier transaction in there. Also what you need is the referenced output, because as you will see later on, transactions can have multiple outputs. So even when you identify a certain transaction, you still need to reference the specific output you want to reference in your current transaction, okay? And that's basically just a number. So an index, you're saying, okay, I'm going with, and let me change to the laser pointer quickly. You're saying, okay, I'm referencing this early transaction right here, and I'm referencing the output of that transaction, the unspent transaction output with index one, for example, okay? And the last thing you need whenever you want to spend something, whenever you want to reference an output is of course the script sick, which is just a complicated phrase for the solution, a solution for whatever is the spending condition on that earlier output. And usually that's just a signature, that's just a proof that you are the current owner, that you are allowed to spend that output, because obviously when it would just be on the blockchain with no conditions whatsoever and anyone could spend it, it wouldn't be there for too long. So it's probably a good idea to lock it behind some conditions. And this script sick right here, that is the solution you have to provide when you want to reference an earlier unspent transaction output. Once you have these inputs in your transaction, so basically what you're saying is, okay, uh, I'm referencing these unspent transaction outputs, using them as my inputs in my new transaction, then you can create new outputs. And again, that is also part of your new transaction. And the output, again, has several conditions. So of course you have to specify the Bitcoin amount here in Satoshi, that's just the smallest fraction of Bitcoin units. But you have to uh, specify exactly how many Bitcoin units or fractions thereof are um, subject to that, to that output. So how, how, how many, when somebody references that output later on, how many Bitcoin units are they allowed to use? And then, of course, you have to give a specific unlocking condition. Uh, remember, just like you had to come up with a solution, provide a solution script, the script sick, for the unlocking conditions of the previous outputs. Now, when you are creating your new outputs, you can add your unlocking conditions, okay? And usually what you're saying there is you're making sure that um, the output, the unspent transaction output you are creating can only be spent by a certain person or by a certain group of persons. They usually uh, they identify themselves with a, a signature with a corresponding private key, okay? 
And uh, yeah, what you're doing is you will see that in the next lecture, uh, you're associating the output to a certain address, to a certain public key, used to certain conditions, and uh, thereby locking it, making sure that only the person you want to be able to spend it, uh, you want to be able to spend it, can actually spend it. That is the idea of this entire um, architecture of the transaction. So let me repeat that really quick. You basically have the transaction that is just a container for value where you're moving, where you're basically assuming some value from an earlier transaction, a confirmed transaction. You're saying, okay, I'm using that as my input. And then you're creating a, a new outputs with your, with your own conditions, and basically moving or switching the conditions under which these Bitcoin units can be spent. And that is the transaction in a more technical point of view. Intuitively, of course, the transaction is just moving value from A to B. So you can think of it on a more intuitive level of uh, sending Bitcoin units from A, person A to person B, for example. So that is an individual transaction here. I already talked about the references, but that right here is just a container. That is an individual transaction. How does it look like in the context? And you can see that here. This is a um, very simplified, highly simplified graph of a, um, uh, of a, of a transaction chain, uh, where you have, for example, here transaction one on the very top. Again, you have input one that is part of transaction one, output one that is part of transaction one. Now let's assume this transaction is confirmed. And later on, somebody who can provide a solution for output one uh, output one can use that output as an input in a new transaction. Let's call it transaction transaction two. And then output one from transaction one becomes input two in transaction two. And this input can then be redistributed in the, uh, in the transaction itself to one or several outputs. Let's assume it's just one. Then we have output two here. Let's say transaction two gets confirmed, then output two becomes an unspent transaction output on the blockchain that can later on be used by someone else who can provide the solution script, the skip script sig for that output and become input three in transaction three. And then once this transaction contains a new input, input three, uh, it can create a new output, output three. And in this case, we stop right here. In this case, we assume that output three at the current state of the blockchain is an unspent transaction output that could be used by uh, someone who can can uh, uh, provide the solution script, who can provide the script sick. Okay, and then it could again, of course, be referenced. That is the idea. That is really these, this chain of transactions. That is how it is used. So everything I told you earlier, uh, where we talked about names, where we even talked about addresses or accounts, is not entirely true. That was a, a, a simplification uh, for our very high level overview, but in fact, that is how Bitcoin works. It uses this UTXO model. So basically you have these transactions that create new outputs and then you can reference these outputs exactly once. So always, obviously you cannot double spend in case uh, and uh, if, if you are able to provide the solution to it, okay? If you're able to provide the script sick. And as I mentioned in this case here in our example, output three is the only unspent transaction output at this current state. Why? Because output one has already been used. So it is a used output. Output two has already been used here in input three. So it is a used output. Only output three would be an unspent transaction output in this case. Now the transactions, um, they are the different types, okay? So of course, what we've seen in our example, just because it's the easiest case, if we explain the concept, are so-called forwarding transactions. So basically we have one input and one output. All you're doing in this case is um, you're, you're fulfilling a certain condition in order to be able to spend the previous unspent transaction output as an input. And then you're adding your, your new conditions uh, so you're saying under these conditions, can my newly created output be spent? So this is just forwarding one input, one output. And essentially what you're doing is you're creating new conditions under which these, uh, under which this newly created output can be spent. Here we have an aggregating transaction. The aggregating transaction uh, aggregates several unspent transaction outputs. So you have several inputs and it only creates a single new output, okay? So it assumes the value from several unspent transaction outputs, puts them in here in this transaction as inputs, and then it accumulates them, it aggregates them as one single output. 
The opposite is a splitting transaction. With a splitting transaction, you have a, a single input, so you only have one spent one unspent transaction output that gets used as an input in this transaction, and you are creating uh, n. Uh, greater or equal to, so uh, larger one essentially outputs uh, with their very own spending conditions. So for example, you could say output one, let me switch to laser pointer once again, output one can be spent when somebody is able to fulfill condition A, output two can be spent when somebody is able to fulfill condition uh, B, and so on, okay? That is the idea, and that gives you quite some flexibility of how you can create your transaction. Also, then that is really important. When you compare transactions, Bitcoin transactions, to transactions from the tra traditional financial system, uh, then you must realize that you have a much greater degree of flexibility, a much greater degree of freedom well, when you're issuing these uh, Bitcoin transactions. As you will see later on, also in terms of the scripting conditions you can add, but uh, even, even when we're just looking at a very high level, even when we're just looking at the transaction types and the number of inputs and outputs, essentially here, um, you could create um, a single transactions, some transaction and make all of your payments. Now, for many reasons, that wouldn't make too much sense, but you could potentially do, you could hypothetically, you could do that. You could just um, either go with one input or with several inputs and create multiple outputs, um, paying all your bills, for example, with one transaction. And that is why you have to be really careful when you're interpreting the transaction count, when you're comparing it to the additional financial system, because Bitcoin transactions um, are quite a lot more flexible and um, can mean something entirely different than a transaction in, an, in the traditional financial system. The last type is just a combination. So you have uh, M to N mapping. We have several uh, inputs and several outputs, and that also shows you the flexibility. Now, let me give you an example of this uh, unspent transaction output uh, hierarchy. Assume that you currently, with the current state, you have these five unspent transaction outputs, A, B, C, D, and E, okay? They are confirmed on the blockchain. They can be spent if somebody knows the, the unlocking conditions, if somebody is able to provide the script sick, the solutions to these unlocking conditions. And uh, that's exactly what happens right now. So here in the top row, uh, right here, you have the previously unspent transaction output A that gets um, assumed by transaction one. So the previous UTXO A becomes an input to transaction one and transaction one thereby creates a new unspent transaction output here in green, F, okay? That would be a forwarding transaction. Here we have an aggregating one. We have the previously UTXO B and C, okay? And they get aggregated in transaction two to a new unspent transaction output G. And you can again see here the unspent transaction output, we have that in green uh, to, to show you that it's still unspent at the current state. Here we have a splitting transaction, unspent transaction output D is used as an input in transa transaction three, and it creates three new outputs. So H, I, and J. And here we have another forwarding one in transaction four, we use UTXO E as an input and we create a, a new UTXO, which is K, okay? So in the next round, for example, we could have transaction five. Transaction five uses F as an input, creates L and M as outputs. So that would be a splitting one. Uh, then we have a combined one here where we have two inputs, three outputs in transaction six. And here note that of course, these unspent transaction outputs, they don't have to be spent in the next block. They can just lay there they basically forever if you don't want to use them or can be used at a much later point in time. And that is exactly what happens here with I. I just remains in its current unspent transaction output uh, status uh, to be spent later on. So it has been confirmed right here as part of transaction three. And now it is this unspent transaction output and it can be used at any point later on. It can only be used once, but it doesn't have to be used immediately, of course. And here the last transaction seven, it's an aggregating one, um, UTXO J and K as input puts in transaction seven, uh, a new UTXO Q. And here with our last example, and I think by now you probably get it, M and N as inputs in transaction eight, creating RST as newly created UTXOs, newly created unspent transaction outputs. And here again, P, I, and Q 
uh, the UTXO are used as inputs in transaction nine and create you. And that, that's basically it. That's the system. That's a transaction graph. That is how you can assume value from a previous unspent transaction output and then create new ones with your very own unlocking conditions. Now, one last thing you have to be aware of, that's the transaction fees. They will be very important later on. And, uh, and they are essentially, uh, they, they are created when you have a, an output value that is smaller than the input value in this case, the miner gets the difference, okay? They get to keep the difference. And the idea behind that is that you're basically, you're giving the miner incentives to um, um, refer your transaction uh, to make sure that it gets included in one of the next blocks. Imagine a situation where capacity has reached it, its cap, uh, where not every single transaction that is floating around in the network can, uh, can be confirmed with the next block, can be confirmed immediately. Uh, then of course you must give the miners incentives and that is something you're doing uh, and when you're when you're setting the uh, output value so the when you're when you're aggregating the uh, the value of all your outputs and it is smaller than the the value of all of your inputs then of course uh, that is something that can be assumed by the miners now we haven't talked about transaction fees so far we haven't talked about confirmations so far so don't worry about it when this sounds confusing at this point all you need to know and this will in fact help you later on. All you need to know is that the transaction is still valid when the output value is smaller than the input value and that uh, the difference can be collected by the miner, so by the person who basically uh, confirms the transaction on the blockchain. Uh, but of course, when the output values are larger than the input values, uh, then of course the transaction will be invalid. I mean, you cannot spend more than what you put in there. You cannot just put one Bitcoin from on, from previously unspent transaction outputs as inputs into one into your transaction, uh, and then try to uh, create uh, new UTXOs, new unspent transaction outputs worth two Bitcoin, for example. That wouldn't work because then your outputs are the value of your out outputs would be larger than the value of your inputs, and that's something you cannot do. Okay. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, the other way is fine. So output value is smaller than input value. That is okay. In this case, the miner gets the difference and that is used to incentivize the miners to uh, refer your transaction and to put your transaction into the next uh, confirmation steps into the next blocks. Okay. All right. So that's it. Uh, next time we will look into the scripting language and uh, various conditions. Stay curious. See you soon.